Good morning. Welcome to worship at Spring Valley Presbyterian Church on this beautiful, extraordinary Easter Sunday. We are so thankful you have chosen to spend this blessed morning with us to celebrate the sacrifice of our Savior. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is truly a gift to gather together to worship and give thanks to our God for this glorious day as Jesus Christ has risen. Please sign the fellowship registration and pass it down the aisle or add an egg pun for your neighbor to just crack them up. We welcome all of our visitors today, and we hope that your time of worship with us is truly excellent. We invite you to sign a visitor card and place it in the offering plate. I would like to direct your attention to the announcements put in your bulletin, especially the congregational meeting at 1025 in the sanctuary next Sunday to elect the new class of elders and deacons. Also, Tracy Barnes has placed some stones near the flowering cross outside, and we invite you to take one and to place it in the memorial garden. Are there any, are there any other announcements that need to be shared? worship God. Please stand and join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. The Lord is risen. risen Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Lord is he is risen indeed.
God's word assures us, if we say that we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God using the prayer of confession in your bulletin. Gracious God, bring new life where we are worn and tired, new love where we have turned hard-hearted, forgiveness where we are hurting and have hurt others, and the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit where we have been bound in our sin. In your tender mercy, raise us in your love so that with joy we will witness to your wonderful deeds. In the name of Jesus, the risen one. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor does he repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. seated. I invite the children to come forward at this time. Are you doing children's? Oh, golly. What a nice group. It, it's so good to see you all today. Happy Easter, isn't it? Thank you. This is a beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, we've got another customer coming up here. <laughs> got two of them, actually. Come on up, sweetie. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> She'll get here. Well, did the Easter bunny come today? He did? Uh, he's, a, he's a good old bunny, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> um, what does Easter mean? You know, it, it, uh, yes, ma'am. Amen. Jesus is raised from the dead. And uh, what does that mean for us? Forgiven. That's right. We're forgiven. Anything else? Well, all sorts of things, you know. God has given us his love, his life. And, um, you know, we, we are assured of his love forever. And uh, Paul said in his letter that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we're bound together now, and we're bound together forever. And that's one of the special meanings of Easter for each of us personally, is that and those who have gone to be with the Lord, we know that we will see them again. And so that's, that's so comforting and so helpful. And uh, I've got a picture of me. There's a picture of me with my dad. And uh, I'm not the one in the clown face. <laughs> But Jenny had written a play and produced it. It was about, uh, about life on the circus. And my dad was there and acted in it. And it was just a special time. And one of our good friends took this picture of me and him standing together. And I remember my dad. And uh, also I had brown hair in those days, which, you know, I keep it around just to remind myself of that. But, um, you know, my dad, like I said, he's gone to be with the Lord. And one of the meanings of Easter for all of us is that uh, we will be together again because Jesus' love brings us together. And, and we, we know that, that beyond this, because of Jesus, that um, our lives are, are, are forever in his love. 
And that's a beautiful thing, you know. Uh, so let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who uh, loves us now and loves us always. We thank you that you don't forget anything but carry our lives in your special love. Thank you. And we make our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Yeah, we're going to listen to the trumpets and then, and then, and then children. So we're going to listen to the trumpets so y'all can go on back to your, your place. And then Miss Meredith, I think, will be, if you want to go to children's time, to go with them. Thank you, Meredith. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Take some time to greet each other. Welcome each other. Uh, didn't know where I was without a program.
and Marilyn, thank you too. God bless you. <clears throat> and let us once again look to God in prayer. Gracious God, indeed, we are so thankful that in Christ you have won the victory and that we stand in, in your presence in the power of your Holy Spirit now and always. We are so thankful for this day and for the victory that you have won for us in Christ. As we turn to read your word, we ask and pray that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you would help us to hear, help us to see, enter us into this scene that we too might rejoice in your everlasting love. And we make our prayer in Christ's name, amen. Our first scripture lesson is from the Song of Solomon. And this beautiful text, uh, it's one that's, that's near and dear to both Jenny and me. Uh, for us, it, it really kind of shares what we see as, as the victory and also Christ and God calling to us out of uh, his sovereign love. And so this beautiful work from the Song of Solomon in the second chapter, beginning with verse 5. The voice of my beloved. Uh, my beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs. The vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away, O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the covert of the cliff. Let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and your face so beautiful. 
Rise, my love, my fair one, come away. The resurrection scene we will read is in Luke's gospel in the 24th chapter. Let us once again listen for God's word. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they, the women, came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. <clears throat> now was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home amazed at what had happened. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Easter came early this year, didn't it? And I checked, and uh, in the next 75 years, according to my count, it will be earlier only nine times. So it was really early, it came early. And, uh, you know, I associate this time of year with, uh, with flowers and, and the leaves starting to come and, and the blossoms starting to come and, and, of course, the pollen, you know. But, uh, you know, but it's come a little early, but here it is. Now, in Ohio, oftentimes in Easter, the flowers would be coming through snow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we had the, the uh, early service at 7 in the Memorial Garden. And I remember up there, we had the sunrise service at a camp that was about seven miles out of town. And often I'd be driving, the roads would be a little icy, and I'm saying, golly, I hope I can make it back to church, you know. But, uh, you know, came early this year. But I imagine if we got these women together and uh, maybe we'll be able to ask this question of them, surely we can, and, and ask them, you know, was, was, early, was Easter too early for you all? And uh, they, they would say, it wasn't soon enough. It wasn't soon enough. Three days, three days was misery, pain, despair. All of our hopes were gone. We just didn't have any hope at all for those days. For three days, these women too, with the Lord, in a way, also descended into hell. It's horrible. Three days of horror. The dream was over. Translation here is that they were perplexed. But a little beyond that, the word actually kind of has the sense of at a loss or to be lost. The women were lost. And all their hope was gone. For us, since it's early Easter, there's another way to view is that All of spring is now before us, and uh, the unfolding spring will be creation's response to the joy of the Easter celebration that we have today. It's not too soon. It's not too early. It's the right moment because the day of resurrection is now. The day of celebration is, is now. And perhaps we identify in some way with the women that day. If our hopes are dead... Easter is now, and new life rises from the dead. And if you're looking for a new start, 
The day of Jesus' resurrection is God saying, now is the time. Instead of looking back, locked perhaps in pain and regret, we can look ahead with great and new expectations. The resurrection is God's answer to all of our pasts. For Jesus' victory is the pivot around which a new season of life now turns. Is the past keeping us, perhaps, from being able to look into the future? There's this wonderful cartoon from Peanuts. And, uh, you know, this time of year, the Peanuts crowd would be getting ready to play baseball again, you know? And, um, you know, every year the, the baseball would begin, and, and Lucy always had trouble catching flies in the outfield, you know? She just couldn't catch a fly. And um, she goes out on the first day saying to herself, this year is going to be different. This year is going to be different. This year is going to be different. So she's out in the outfield, fly ball comes, and there it goes. And so she goes back, and Charlie Brown meets her, and he says, what happened? What happened? And she said this, the past got in my eyes. The past got in my eyes. And I wonder, you know, is that us sometimes? You know, the past gets in our eyes and we're not able to move ahead. One of the most beautiful scenes in Jesus' ministry is the encounter that he has with the woman at the well. And she's out there in Samaria. She's out there at the well, heat of the day, all by herself. And Jesus saw her and knew that within her heart and spirit, it all dried up. She had a checkered past. And uh, part of that past was probably you know, broken promises and, and men that hurt her really bad. And, uh, you know, she was out there and she needed, she needed just something, a drop to refresh her soul, which Jesus supplied. There's a beautiful poem by Christina Rossetti, and uh, thankful to Jenny for introducing me to Christina, Christina Rossetti. It's an amazing poet. The birthday of my life has come. My love has come to me. But she wrote this beautiful poem called A Better Resurrection. And I thought about this poem as I was thinking about the woman at the well. Rossetti said this. I have no wit, no words, no tears. My heart within... It's like a stone. Is numb too much for hopes or fears? Look right, look left, I dwell alone. I lift mine eyes, but dimmed with grief, no everlasting hills I see. My life is like the falling leaf. Oh, Jesus, quicken me. My life is like a faded leaf. My harvest dwindled to a husk. Truly, my life is void and brief and tedious barren dusk. My life is like a frozen thing. No bud nor greenness can I see. Yet rise it shall, the, cup of the, the sap of spring. Oh, Jesus, rise in me. My life is like a broken bowl, a broken bowl that cannot hold one drop of water for my soul, or cordial in the searching cold, cast in the fire, the perish thing, Melt and remold me till it be a royal cup for him, my king. Oh, Jesus, drink of me. And uh, she went back to her village after Jesus gave her the water of life. And she told the folks in the village, she said, it's, it's come meet a man who knew everything about me, who knows everything about me. Could this be the Christ? You know? And... Uh, you see, Jesus remembers. He knows everything. And in this man's beautiful mind, all our blighted yesterdays that lighted our ways to dusty death are now swallowed up in his victory. And the lifeless seeds, the husks that we planted in, in the past filled with regret, Jesus now transforms and out of our lives, he causes something new and beautiful and filled with fruit and promise for the future emerges because of the resurrection from the dead. It's a new day, 
a new day. Now, some carry scars of what people have said, what people have said about them, what people have said to them, or what people have said about them behind their backs. Now think of these women, you know. They go to the disciples and, and they tell them the great news, you know, and, and they don't believe them. And it's translated here, they thought it was an idle tale. The word goes a little beyond that, from what I understand, that word, medical writers use that word for the wild talk of those in delirium or hysteria. You know, the disciples, you've lost your mind. You know, there's no way. And that's, you know, one of the truths to me of the validity of the Gospels. You know, because the disciples, you know, if I was what I would have edited that out, you know. <laughs> but no, I said, no, that's what we said, you know. It, it needs to go in there. And, uh, you know, we find our own hope. You know, they thought they'd lost their minds. The angel said to the women, remember what he said to you. You remember his words, what he said to you. Um, what Jesus said to them, what Jesus said about them, and what Jesus said for them is now superimposed over the past words and nullifies everything that they had ever heard about anything, even what they might have thought of themselves. For Jesus' words are the depository of holy memory. And we are rich to the extent that we listen. And we are made poor to the extent that we don't. Paul said it this way. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus who died? Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is seated at the right hand of God and also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the truth that we live in as Christians. The day, this day is God's way of helping us to see that we live in the eternal sunshine of the eternal now, the eternal spring. The winter is over. It's over and gone. Come now, my love, my fair one. Come away. For your face is so beautiful. Come now, my love. Come away. This day takes us beyond the limits of this world. And we stand at the threshold. And Jesus is the door. And as we go through him, he leads us into eternal life. I came across this thing from William F. Buckley not too long ago. It's about Bill Buckley and final truths. And whatever one might think of Buckley, now Buckley was a very devout Christian man. And what I understand about him is that if you wrote Buckley a letter, he probably would answer you. He probably would send you a personal letter. And he wrote this letter when he was 37 years old. And he wrote it in response, <laughs> he wrote it in response to the young conservative club of Walt Whitman High School in the Bronx, you know, in 1962, you know. And uh, they asked him a question about a book that he'd written. And so he, he responded to them and he said this, in the passage you quote from my book, indeed, 
To refer to the religious truth, I intended indeed to refer to the religious truth that is our central heritage and to the moral philosophy and human insight that derive from it. And sometimes this position is referred to in a phrase going back, I believe, to the days of the Roman Empire as, quote, the morality of the last days, unquote, by which is meant the worldview of men who know that death is close. But in the long view, we all stand sentenced to death, and whether it comes in 1995 or tomorrow makes no difference. And that is why the morality of the last days always applies to what is, quote, finally important in human experience, unquote. All our technologies of social welfare, our science, all our comfort, all our liberty, all our democracy and foreign aid and grand eloquent orations, all that means nothing to me and nothing to you in the moment when we go. At that moment, we must put our souls in order. And the way to do that was lighted for us by Jesus. And since then, we have need of no other light. And that is what is finally important. It has not changed, and it will not change. It is the truth which shall ever abide in the future. And if it is reactionary to hold a truth that will be valid for all time, then words have lost their meaning and men their reason. This is our story now through faith. Oftentimes I find myself with Peter in John's gospel in that scene when Jesus' teachings become so difficult that John writes that even some of his disciples, many of his disciples started to pull away from him. It's just too much. And so Jesus turned to the 12 and asked them, will you also go away? And it's Peter who said, now Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. In the end, you know, as Paul said, earthly, earthly habitation, earthly, this early, earthly dwelling place with God, will, I mean, earthly dwelling place will dissolve. But we know that we have an eternal home, house in the heavens, not made by human hands. Grass withers, flower falls. The word of our Lord abides forever. It's not too early this year. Indeed, it's the right time, the right day. And I submit that Jesus is just not the final truth. I submit that Jesus is ultimately the only truth. The one by whom, through whom, and for whom all questions of truth are decided. Because as Jesus said of himself, and I believe this, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the door through which you can pass. For the God, Father who sent me loves you, and I love you. And if you're one of my sheep, I will hold you now. I will hold you forever. And no one can snatch you out of my hands. Jesus is the final and ultimate truth for this life, now and forever. And through faith in the power of the Holy Spirit, if you have had doubts, if you have had doubts, may this day, the eternal dawn of Easter morning, shine upon you, shine upon you, and the power of the Holy Spirit touch you, and hear what Jesus said about you. He said, because I live, you will live also. We will live right now, we will live tomorrow, and we will live forever with him. For Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we stand and affirm our faith as we share together the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we turn to our time of prayer, we remember all those who are listed on our prayer page and also give thanks for the beautiful lilies that have been placed in the sanctuary in memory and honor of your loved ones. Indeed, we know that, uh, that the Lord has gathered all of us up and, and nothing is lost, nothing is, nothing is gone. Indeed, we uh, today stand at the threshold and all that is near and dear in the eyes of the Lord, he, he doesn't lose, he doesn't lose. And, and this is our faith and our assurance that he loves us with an eternal love. So let's once again look to God in prayer. Gracious God, indeed, we are so thankful for this day. For this is the day we celebrate in particular, the resurrection from the dead. And we are so thankful that you loved us so much that you came to live among us, sharing our sorrows and our griefs, sharing our joys, our celebrations. Indeed, you carried everything to the cross and uh, carried it there, and uh, we know that, that our sins are forgiven, and, and we can live free. We can be free, free to love, free to share, free to give, free to give thanks. And so help us, dear Lord, as this Easter day passes the calendar, that we might every day live thankfully and joyfully by what you have given to us and, and lead us, we pray, into a new future. And, and may your word, may your word and the words of your son dwell in us with, rich, with richness. Indeed, we are so thankful. Dear Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are worshiping this day. And we pray particularly for those of our brothers and sisters who are suffering because of their faith, our faith. And we pray that you would, would bless these and, and keep your church safe and that you would empower her witness with the message of peace and reconciliation and life that is ours in Christ and that folks everywhere who are struggling in darkness would see and hear and come out of the darkness into the light of this beautiful day. Dear Lord, we are so thankful. We are so thankful for all that we share together in Christ. So hear us as we pray together the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us worship God as we present our morning offering.
gracious God, indeed, we are so thankful for the gift of life and love and joy that you have given to us in Christ our Lord. We ask and pray that you would receive the gifts that we bring as symbols of our life and our love for you, symbols of our devotion. And we ask and pray that you would direct these gifts and our lives so that in all things the life of your Son would be seen in and through us. And we make our prayer in his name. Amen. extinguish the candles on the table and the smoke rises in the presence of God and to Christ himself who is there making intercession for us. We, uh, we are so thankful for this day. It's the day of, of celebration, the day of victory, the day when we celebrate what Jesus has done for us and all that he continues to do for us. For he is the light of the world and as we go forward from this place, we take that life with us and that light. May our witness shine with joy and thanksgiving for the victory that Christ has given to us. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide in your hearts always. Amen. <laughs> Sunshine.